So Cooper Cronk, he's good to go. one 300 And the great man who we're talking about is on the line from Fox League. Cooper Cronk joins the run home with Joel and Fletch with the missile in the chair. G'day, Coops. Afternoon, gents. How are we? 2012, we're just talking about you. You leave Accor Stadium and you've won the grand final against the Bulldogs and you leave with a Clive Churchill medal around your neck. Explain that feeling. Um, many, many moons ago now, Jolly. Um, yeah, no, look, obviously it was, I think um, the emotion attached to that game was um, off the back of the salary cap in 2010. We went close in 11 and then 12. So uh, as opposed to carrying on like a couple of pork chops <laughs> at the Melbourne Storm, it was actually a bit more emotional for everyone back in the sheds. But um, yeah, it was a... Yeah, in terms of individual moment, it was obviously great, but I think from a club's perspective, to bounce back from the, the depths of that it was a couple of years earlier was probably the greatest enjoyment of that, that day. Coops, I'll st- tell a missile, and I, I hope I've told the story right, but you you played in nine grand finals, which is just remarkable, and, and your mentality around the first three versus the second three versus the third three, I tried to tell the story, but do you mind sharing <laughs> what it was? Uh, yeah, I failed a lot, um, so I learned a lot of lessons at that level. Um, look, I think um, I think the first three, I was like twenty, early 20s, 23, 24, 25 or something like that, won one of three, and I just remember sort of going into those games subconsciously sort of hoping, like, geez, I hope I win, hope I play well, hope the ball goes my way, and uh, managed to lose two of the three and got lucky in one of them. Uh, and then the next three, I was sort of like, well, it worked out that I was hoping and not playing well. So the next three, I just went, you know what, I'm just going to try and be the best player here. I'm just going to go for it and not hesitate. If I see something, just absolutely go for it, full confidence, and managed to have a little bit of success doing that way. Um, but then towards the back end, you realise at like middle 30, early 30s to middle 30s that like winning is the most important thing. It's not playing well or did you hesitate or did you hope so the back end was more around the last three was um, what can I do to make my teammate the best player what do I need to do to help this team win so um, I think that mindset end up if I had to learn that from the early days then I might have been a little bit more successful on grand final day but it ended up being okay and um, I think you get to that age and you learn your lessons it ends up helping you wish you could wind back the clock and go again Won all those three, those last three that he's talking about, uh, Missile? Yeah, helps. Hey, Cooper, we just stumbled into a conversation about Immortals. Well, we threw your name in there, but we won't make you comment on your own <laughs> on your own status. But we just threw up three names. Uh, Thurston, Darren Lockyer, and Cameron Smith. You've played with and against all three. Could you pick one from the from the bunch? Uh, Missile, I'll be lucky to get a toilet block named after me. So <laughs> definitely be in. Um, look, I, I, I get the argument around like um, there's been a gap between the last sort of immortal, but I don't really worry about numbers. It's mm. like if you deserve to be in there, well, you deserve to be in there. If there's five from a error, then put them all in, and yeah. you can make a case for every one of those deserve to be. And um, look, for, I'm, I'm a little bit biased. I've played with them, played against them, and they obviously you know, dominated their individual positions over a long period of time. Their resume stacks up. Um, but if you're telling me you had to choose one, I'm, I'm Cameron Smith. I don't. People, I, people always say who's the best player you play with. I never separate Smith and Slater. I always say them both together. Mm. So um, I think the three of them that you just named absolutely deserve to be there. Wow. Okay. Uh, just with those grand finals. So six. You won six grand finals of the nine. Do you remember any game plans or just give us some insight? Was there a plan for one of those grand finals where you go, geez, that worked to a T and. We, we thought we'd pull the trigger here in this game and it just came off perfectly in the grand final. Yeah, the, the 2012 one was um, everything that we spoke about um, worked out. Um, if you go back, like the Bulldogs were playing a style where the middle forwards were passing the ball a lot and Ben Barber was just carving up teams at will. So we made a decision to treat the middle forwards like they were a halfback and put a lot of pressure on them. And then we made our outside defenders rush up and shut down um, Barbara a lot. So it forced middle forwards who weren't used to pressure to make a bad or a good pass under pressure and then shut down Barber for space. And uh, they didn't score many points that day, which was probably in our favour because we managed to win a low-scoring game and worked out pretty well. Um, and then I think um, the... Yeah, the, the back end ones in terms of the Roosters, um, in terms of a plan, I think Trent Robinson's 
greatest strength is he's got this, particularly in 18 and 19, he had this vision in 1st of November what the season would look like. And it worked out to an absolute T. All the themes, all everything that he drove all year long just worked out and we played our best football back in the year. So um, it was a good sort of, how can I say this, like a wave to ride at the Roosters that year because Trent was just playing his cards that he wanted to at each stage and uh, it really set up what uh, ended up being a couple of special years. Wow. Cooper, just on uh, this weekend's footy, so the Roosters head up to Newcastle tonight. Now, I've announced the Roosters as my best bet of the round for this week. Now, what I like to do when I punt on a team is convince myself of the bet. (laughs) But I've got a better an even better option today. I can be convinced by one of the great minds of rugby league that I'm backing the right team tonight. Well, what, what's the reason for you to back the Roosters? Good then? question. Yeah, okay. Great question. I, I have this little system, Cooper, where I go I go through both teams, player by player, and don't give a point. Don't tell this system, please. Please <laughs> don't give, tell him this I system. Give a point, I give a point to the winning player in each position across each team. And for example, I give every point to the Roosters forward pack, uh, 8 through 13, over the night. So I've done a point system, and I've come up Roosters well in front. So that's why I'm so confident. Mm. Well, if I was to apply that theory to the 100 meter goal freestyle final, I would have no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> um, the rugby league's a pretty simple game; it's run hard, tackle hard. So I'd be saying the Roosters might run hard, tackle hard. But in terms of some some like nuance that goes into tonight's game, I think um, you know Newcastle are a huge emotional team at home. I think like maybe the Warriors is probably similar to the way they play at home that they really drive off that crowd and the support from the home fans. And for the Roosters, well, it was really poor start to the game last week against the Dogs. Whatever happened in the second half, they needed to bring at the first half and they might have got away with a victory. So with um, no Tedesco, Dom Young suspended, uh, no Sam Walker, I think you'll see a real basic way that Roosters play tonight. I think their forwards will be dominant through Radley and Hargraves and Lindsay Collins. Um, And I think Luke Keary... Uh, while he's the main ball player, without Sam Walker, uh, he might uh, come up with a, a big game tonight for the Roosters to win. Mate, they could have sent you out, like that grand final of 2019. <laughs> and just sit in behind Keery, tell everyone yeah. to go. And um, <laughs> uh, By the way, you can catch the Knights take on the Roosters live and ad-free um, during play on KO Sports. Now, Coops, I just want to ask you about um, this South Sydney situation. Uh, it's very, yeah. very messy at the moment. First question is, if you got this... Hello, Cooper. Would you like to be an assistant, uh, the interim coach for the rest Ooh, of the year? Would you consider yeah. something like that? Uh, no. no. Um, <laughs> my days of coaching, are they're not even going to begin. I've got no interest in coaching. No. I enjoy my role. Yep. Um, but if I was interested in coaching, it's absolutely a position I would consider because wow. look at that team. Look at the team on paper. Mm. Um, I don't see that their season is done and dusted if again I've never coached a team in my life so I say this with no experience but um, the leadership group there in Latrell Mitchell, Damien Cook, uh, Cam Murray and Cody Walker like that's something that they need to double down on you know Cook's not there, Latrell's gone so now it's really down to Cody Walker and Cam Murray and I feel with Jack White in there um, if those guys can for example if Cody can make his first kick and chase a good one, if Cam Murray takes his first carry and skittles a couple of defenders and Jack White just carries off the back fence, that influences everyone else to say, follow me. And I think that's exactly where South Sydney need to start. There's a lot of noise, and when there's a lot of pressure, you double down on the basics of the game, and let's see if they can bounce back. You've been coached by Mal, and you're now workmates with Mal there at, uh, at yep. Fox. Is he the man to turn the season around? I really like the idea um, in in practicality terms. It's interesting to see how it plays out. But um, in terms of aura, in terms of influence, in terms of impact, even here on a Saturday night when he works in at work, mm. w- walks in at work, I stand up and go, yes, Mr. Maninga, what do you want? <laughs> oh, yeah. You want some chicken? I can get you some. Yeah, so uh, I, he set up a really good environment in the Queensland days. He's not a um, – and I hope he doesn't take offence to this. He's not an X's and O's coach. He's a uh, creating environment, make people happy, um, and then the best players will thrive in that environment. So um, it's very interesting. I, I wish I'd have thought of the idea because I would have said it publicly, but it's a good idea. And um, look, I don't want to talk about you know, whether Jason Dimitri survives or not, but if I was a player at South Sydney and my coach was under pressure, I would do. I think that's a reflection yep. of me and how poorly I've played. So I would absolutely stand up and fight for my coach. 
Coos, we've got to let you go because we've got a break as well, but we really appreciate it. Just one real quick one, and I, I've, I've used you as an example. 2013, Sonny Bill Williams goes to the Roosters. James Maloney, 2016. Cooper Cronk, 2018 to the Roosters. All ships rise with the tide. Roger Tuovasashek, could he be that one piece of the puzzle that finally takes the Warriors to the glory town? Yeah, absolutely. I, I love what the Warriors stand for. I love the um, the way the coach talks about the game and his players. I love the way the players talk about their coach and how they're connected to the community. And I tell you, after a little shaky start, geez, they're putting some very good football together. They have all the ingredients that says they'll be there in September. So, yeah, absolutely. They are up there on the top line of betting for me. Cooper Cronk, the listeners have loved you. have been smashed with texts uh, saying how great it's been to have you on, mate. We'll catch you on Super Saturday, including the Bunnies Clash with the Sharks with all three matches live and exclusive to Fox League, available on KO. Thanks, Coops. Enjoy it, boys. Thanks for having me.